3U Functions Day 10, our last lesson in the Functions Unit before our Review Day and Test Day, Inverse Functions. There are a number of different ways of considering inverse functions, and one of them will make the most sense to you. The first thing to think about an inverse function is an inverse of a relation can be obtained by reversing the domain and the range. So for this simple function, my domain is minus 3, 0, 2. And my range is 4, 7, and 9. We drew this as a mapping diagram that minus 3, 0, 2 maps onto 4, 7, 9. For the inverse relation, 4, 7, 9 will map onto minus 3, 0, 2. They are both functions, but the domain and ranges are opposite. So our original function, our original relation, I'm sorry, in blue, and the inverse relation in green. Secondly, inverse functions are a special class of functions that undo each other. If f at x is 2x plus 1, we have a line function where we've taken the parent function f at x equals x, and we have multiplied by 2, and we have added 1. For g of x, we have subtracted 1, and we have divided by 2. Opposite operations have been done. Let's see if these are inverse. By the old definition that we knew, the domain and the range are interchanged. I'm going to choose some values. My input, x. I'm going to just use 0, 1, 2, and 3. And my output, f at x, is 0 in, I get a 1, a 1 in 3, 4, 5, and 7. For g of x, my input would also be called x. My output is named g of x. And if this is truly an inverse function, the domain and the range should be different. 1, 3, 5, and 7. If I put 1, 3, 5, and 7 into g of x, 1 take away 1 is 0 over 2 is 0. Looks good. Put a 3 in, 2 over 2 is 1. Put in a 5, 5 take away 1 is 4, 4 over 2 is 2. Substitute 7 is 3. So the input and the output have been exchanged, or the domain and the range are opposite. This is an inverse function. It has undone the original function. This undoing is obtained by reversing the roles of the input and output number. For a function, f at x, the notation that we use is f at x with a little minus 1, just like we have second function sine when we're trying to undo a sine function, f at minus 1 at x is the undo or the inverse of f at x. Let's find some inverse functions. f at x is merely the set of the four points, minus 2, minus 8, 0, minus 2, 3, 4, and 4, 7. Let's graph that first of all, f at x in red. f at x is minus 2, minus 8. Here it is. 0, minus 2, 3, 4 and 4, 7.
the inverse function of f, f prime of x, would be minus 8 minus 2 minus 2, 0, 4, 3, and 7, sorry, 7, 4. Let's graph that one as well, minus 8 minus 2. Minus 2, 0, 4, 3, 7, 4. Interesting. There seems to be a pattern with those dots. We should notice that there is a reflection about the line y equals x. Well, that won't work for me, so we're going to try it freehand. If you can notice the line y equals x with a slope of 1 and a 0 y-intercept, I'm doing the best that I can with my old hands, <laughs> approximately there, we should notice that the green points and the red points reflect about that line. I am missing a red point. I must have erased it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4. A green point. I can't make green. Right there. An inverse point. There is a reflection about the line y equals x. So in fact, inverse functions are one of our reflections. If f at x equals 2x plus 3, we would like to draw it and the inverse. So our inverse function, we can do it with reverse procedure. So if we have 2x plus 3, it means multiply x by 2, and then add 3. So the inverse function is exactly opposite. First of all, subtract 3. So we have undone the second thing. And then we undo multiply by 2, which is divide by 2. So subtract 3. Then divide by 2. Everything is reverse. Those should be inverse functions. We should see a reflection across the line y equals x. Let's check our line. Our function f at x will be in black. 2x plus 3, y-intercept of 3 slope of 2, we have a line through here. This part board is really tricky. There's f at x, goes forever. Our, our in, in fact, I'll extend that a little bit. There. Our inverse function we'll do is green x minus 3 over 2. I can rewrite that function just so it's a little bit prettier as a half x minus 3 or a half x minus 3 halves. So my y-intercept is minus 1 and a half. My slope is a half. 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. There. There. If you don't breathe, it works much better. 
inverse function of x. What we expected to see is that those are reflections across the line y equals x. And it is, in fact, an inverse function, and it is a reflection across y equals x. Second, third rather, f at x equals 4x minus 2. Another line. Let's draw it. Our function is a line with y-intercept minus 2 and a slope of 4. draw our line. There is f at x. Our inverse function at prime x is take our x. Opposite functions in opposite order. Add 2 first. Divide by 4 last. I would rewrite it as a quarter x plus a half. Graphing that, we have a y-intercept of a half, a slope of a quarter, up 1 over 4. Inverse function of f in blue should look, look like a reflection across the y equals x line. Do you notice where they intersect each other or would if I weren't drawing on a smart board? The point of intersection of f at x and f prime of x is on the line y equals x because that is what they are being ref reflected across. So that is your invariant point. Your invariant point is always what you are reflecting across. For D, we are going to look at a parabola. Let's draw f at x equals x squared minus 1. It's a parabola that has been moved down 1. That's the only transformation that has happened. So our vertex is now here. Our regular step pattern over 1, up 1, and so on. We can graph our parabola. Our function, f at x, is in black. We expect that the inverse function will be a reflection across the line y equals x. To verify that, we're going to graph the other one as well. Let's draw the line y equals x. It actually helps when I stop breathing. <laughs> so you'll get silence every time I draw a graph. It's a good thing. Okay, y equals x. Let's determine our inverse function. The inverse function is determined from interchanging the domain and the range. That doesn't seem particularly helpful at the moment. For our function, I know that the domain is all possible x values. I know that my range for a parabola determines on the vertex and whether it opens up or opens down. For this particular one, I have a y value must be greater than or equal to minus 1. y is the real numbers. So for my inverse function, I'm going to change colors. For my inverse function, those domain and range will be opposite. So my domain would have to be x greater than or equal to negative 1. And my range would be y can be anything in the real number set. But that does not help me find the equation. Since I know that the domain and the range are exchanged, I can do a little simple xy swap. 
So I'm going to do my rough work over here. If in the original function y equals x squared minus 1, then for my inverse, x equals y squared minus 1. To determine it in function form, I want to have y equals something, not x equals something. So I'm going to play with this for a moment to get it into the form that we're used to. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And since I have imposed the square root to solve this problem, I have to remember there could be a positive answer or a negative answer. So y is the positive or the negative square root of x plus 1. That is my inverse function. And we write it exactly like that. The inverse function is positive or negative square root of x plus 1. We know how to graph that. That is the parent function square root of x. And it is a horizontal shift to the one, one to the left, sorry. So I'm going to do the positive arm first. I'm going to do this first. So f minus x equals the positive square root of x plus 1, 1 to the left. It is this I'm going to draw the other part of the graph, the negative, separately. And that would be a vertical flip across the x-axis, upside down. x plus 1 under the square root sign is 1 to the left. So it would graph like that. Two bits together form f minus 1 at x. It is not a function. There are two functional arms. This is an upper functional arm. This is a lower functional arm. And each of the halves are in themselves functions. But the inverse itself together is not a function we can draw it thinking about the upper half and the lower half. It appears to be reflected across the line y equals x. It is an inverse function. If it, f at x equals 1 over x minus 2, we want to find the inverse function. Let's draw the original function first. Our parent function And we have, because it's glued to the x, we have a horizontal translation two to the right. Let's draw it. Okay. I'm going to draw the parent function first, just because these ones are tricky y equals 1 over x. As the uh, important point, 1, 1, it approaches the asymptote in this direction, approaches the vertical asymptote in this direction, uh, a little too close. Negative 1, negative 1 is important, approaches an asymptote from that side, and approaches below an asymptote that side. That is our parent function, y equals 1 over x. To draw our actual f at x, we need to draw that parent function with a translation 2 to the right. So everything has been moved 2 to the right. There, approaches, sorry, my asymptote has moved as well. So my asymptote for the parent function is the y-axis. So my asymptote for this transformed function is 2 over. 
And so my f at x approaches this asymptote here. This has been moved over 2 as well and approaches the new asymptote from the left and from below. A little exuberant there. That is f at x. We want to determine the inverse function. We know that the inverse function should be a reflection of our red function and the, across the line y equals x. Let's draw it. Here we go. Take a deep breath. There y equals x, we are expecting, Christmas colors, to have a reflection of the red across that line. That is really hard to visualize. So we're going to do the same process as we did with the last one. We're going to do our little rough work over here. And we are going to interchange the x and the y. So for the original function, y equals 1 over x minus 2. For our inverse function, we are going to have x equals 1 over y minus 2. To put it in the form that we're used to, we're going to rearrange it a little bit. I am going to multiply both sides by y minus 2 and divide both sides by x at the same time. It's like I've done a swap. Then I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Our inverse function should be 1 over x plus 2. Our original function had been a horizontal translation 2 to the right. Our inverse function is a vertical translation 2 up. Let's see if graphing it will give us the results that we expect. My parent function for the blue function is 1 over x, and I would move that black 1 over x up so I take that point that I know up to. It would approach asymptotes below and to the left, but two up. So my new asymptote horizontally is right here. My inverse function should approach that asymptote in that direction. And the y-axis from here. I have moved this point up to as well, and it approaches the asymptotes from below and from the left. And I should see, if I can, a reflection of the blue and the red functions across the green y equals x line. They should intercept here and here, more or less, on that axis of reflection y equals x. Please try in your textbook, page 46, 1, 2, 5, 6, 9, 10, 12, and 13, and you'll have to take care in drawing these.